Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, Automated Public Transport, Delivering Sustainable and Smart Mobility. We have a very exciting topic this morning and an excellent high-level panel of speakers. Um, automated Public Transport um, will help the EU deliver on its uh, policy goal of the Green Deal uh, and also serves the digitalization uh, agenda. It will help um, to reduce uh, pollution and congestion in urban areas uh, and also um, uh, improve uh, safety, which are, of course, crucial issues. Um, we have an excellent high-level panel. We're going to start off um, in a couple of minutes um, with uh, Anne-Marie Idrac, who is the French government's representative on automated driving, uh, Dr. Tobias Miethaner, Director for Digital Society at Germany's Transport Ministry, uh, and Joanna Sikoska from uh, the European Commission's DG Grow uh, Department. Uh, and then they will um, join us for uh, a panel discussion uh, later on. Um, but now I'm going to hand the floor over to Olivier Le Cornec, Chief, Chief Technology Officer at Navia, uh, to, um, to um, welcome the speakers. Good morning. I am Olivier Le Cornec, CTO of Navia. Thank you for joining us to this event dedicated to automatic public transport. I would like to thank the panelists who dedicated their precious time for our events. Madame Idrak, Ms. Sikowska, Dr. Mitt Armour, Mr. Hertug, Mr. Mesgani, Mr. Golevsky. The success of our European Green Deal depends on our ability to make the transport system as a rule sustainable and resilient. In line with the EU policy, electrified thermal shuttles level four have the potential to render public transport cleaner, safer, sustainable, more efficient and inclusive. Automatic driving system for public transport is a game changer. They use the use case of the EV shuttles level four with a safety driver on board are already on the road today. The EU ecosystem on automatic driving for public transport is a front runner and is demonstrating this advancement all over the world today. At Navia, as I speak, we have 80 units in operation from Florida to Japan. We prove the advance of European technology at the latest Dubai World Autonomous Driving Challenge, winning two of the three awards. As we say in French, we need to convert the triangle. Il faut transformer les l'essai, switching from experimentation to commercialization. This is an urgency to structure and open, and open the market with the support of the EU and the state members. That is why we see a need to solve the current EU fragmentations, the lack of harmonized legal framework on type approval at the EU level, as well as the need to trigger our EU industrial policy. But such, we can foster the EU ecosystem to position our industrial competitiveness among the international leaders, to be resilient and to reinforce EU sovereignty because this is also about artificial intelligence, also 5G leadership, and the smart city of tomorrow. Several actions show that we are almost there with many great advancements. Among them, EU defined sustainable and smart mobility strategy, which has to come with finance, and we see the Bill administration massively investing in this field, exactly the same in the Asia, Asia in Asia, Germany and France release new law on automated driving. They need to be scaled up to EU level. EU working groups are preparing TAP approval for new vehicle shuttle on their virtual driving, which as an EU first could become a standard. Still full synergy has to be triggered. The present key decision maker will debate on this synergy on what is needed to put in place an harmonized EU action plan. Thank you all and enjoy the debate. Uh, thanks very much, Olivier. Right, and then uh, let's move on with the next um, section of the webinar. Um, we have um, three speakers, um, so I'd like to um, hand the floor to uh, Anne-Marie uh, Idrac uh, to talk about um, the French experience and uh, uh, the French plans for the automated driving sector. French uh, government uh, thinks it is so important to develop uh, automated uh, public and shared uh, mobility services. Public and shared are the words we use in, in France. Uh, the first one, as it was said, is uh, inclusion in the green 
uh, mood of uh, the European Commission in which we are very uh, committed. Uh, and uh, we think uh, that uh, the um, split uh, towards the mass and uh, public uh, transport through an improvement of their efficiency and performances and attractivity is important and then automation can contribute to that. Uh, the second point, uh, which is expressed in our recent law on uh, mobility, is that we want to uh, reinforce the power of local authorities and to give them um, new tools uh, in order to develop uh, local uh, uh, mobility policies, uh, particularly in uh, rural and peri-urban, peri-urban is very important areas, and automation can also contribute to, to, to this. Uh, and the third reason is the fact that uh, all our AV strategy uh, is based on the concept of use cases and services, use cases. And then uh, all our technical and the market analysis uh, converge. Of course, individual cars and logistics are well taken into account, but all these uh, analyses converge uh, in uh, the fact that public and shared transport must be really in the forefront of the agenda. Why? Because they are the more mature and the more promising type of uh, application. This uh, was, uh, by the way, the very important factor of a good public acceptance. So these uh, are our reasons. I come now, it will be my uh, second point, uh, to our uh, regulatory uh, framework. Uh, this framework is uh, totally co-constructed, uh, co-built uh, between uh, the private and uh, the public uh, sector. Uh, we are lucky enough to have a very wide and structured uh, ecosystem, uh, the high called on the software uh, manufacturers and, uh, and suppliers, uh, global leading transport um, operators, organized local uh, transport authorities, as I said, road operators and suppliers, telecom operators and suppliers, and, and, and so on. Uh, so uh, our strategy is uh, well, the result of uh, both uh, uh, of a combination of a strong political uh, will at the level of uh, President Macron uh, and a very dynamic ecosystem. Let's come to the facts. Uh, we have set a regular uh, framework um, uh, for experiments uh, back to uh, 2015, uh, and it had been uh, graded year after year, especially in the two uh, in 2019, uh, by allowing experiments without an up on board, of course, very important, okay. and. Uh, yeah. clarifying the responsibility uh, regime between the system and the driver when you have one board still during experiments. And it is in the, this uh, framework uh, that we had so many shuttle experiments, including of course, uh, um, quite a number of them operated by uh, Navia. Now we decided this year to go beyond experiments with a fresh new law, very fresh new, as it was uh, decided by the government, uh, in fact, uh, last month on April 14th. Uh, and uh, this new law uh, sets up for the permanent regime, not for experiments, three things, responsibility principles for the driver and the system, high level uh, safety requirement for the system, and safety demonstration and authorization processes for uh, automated system with no up on board. And of course, everybody knows that uh, this uh, step of the non, not, non op uh, the services will be the most uh, important. Uh, this uh, regulatory frame will uh, definitively uh, enter into force uh, in September 22. Uh, which allows uh, safety guidelines uh, to be well uh, set up in details, uh, once again, in collaboration with the private uh, sector. Uh, we consider that the international panorama, uh, referring to the UNECE, was clear enough in terms of the definition and concepts to build such a national uh, network uh, with new production, of course, uh, between European national and local service approvals. My last words will be just an introduction about uh, what we are uh, waiting 
from uh, Europe and from, from the Commission. Uh, as it was said uh, by Monsieur Le Carnec, uh, it is so important, of course, uh, to, to have a united market uh, and to, uh, to, to be aware of the risk of uh, fragmentation. Uh, we think that uh, the Commission should uh, go on uh, to keep pressure on the UN ECE agenda. Uh, because uh, vehicle type uh, approval should be in the long term the, the basis of uh, all our safety regulations. So please, <laughs> I say that to the representative of the commission, uh, keep this pressure. Uh, second, we have the question of uh, interoperability of uh, V2X communication. Uh, in the past, the commission had dedicated very useful and interesting resources uh, for uh, CITS. And now this must be expanded uh, first to a wider range of use cases and uh, second to uh, all sorts of technology, including, of course, uh, 5, uh, 5G. Uh, well, I have two concerns. I must say I have two concerns about uh, EU, EU uh, Commission involvement, which is so important. And we discuss that uh, very often with Tobias. And uh, we have in, uh, in mind to, to propose a commonly uh, uh, a clear uh, German French uh, position. My two concerns are the following. Uh, the first one is about a vision. Uh, we have on the table a uh, sustainable and smart mobility strategy issued uh, last December, uh, including more than um, 80 actions. Then we have another stream of actions coming from the European Digital Agenda uh, with uh, some items such as uh, platforms regulation and uh, uh, AI with which have or could have important impact of uh, regulation for our sector. So we need a, a, clear, a clearer picture of what, why, and when uh, the European agenda will address uh, precisely and clearly for uh, all actors, private and, uh, and public, these uh, issues. And my second uh, concern, uh, is uh, uh, about uh, the uh, inter to, into force and of the uh, CCAM partnership. Uh, because, of course, it is very important uh, versus uh, the international uh, competition uh, to, to go on with the research and the innovation uh, in this type of uh, partnership. And once again, it is not so clear uh, what will be the priorities and, and uh, in which type of uh, framework uh, we could uh, go on with this type of, uh, of uh, very important program. Of course, I'm confident because I, I know that the Commission in the past, with the help of the member states, uh, succeeded in uh, many uh, interesting steps for mobility and uh, for technology. Uh, but uh, in the, the, this morning, I wanted to say these uh, two concerns uh, and uh, to say uh, also how important it is uh, to have uh, uh, common approaches between uh, Germany and France and also common approaches uh, between uh, the private and the public uh, sector. Thanks. Right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Idrak. Okay, uh, let's go straight on with Mr. Mitana from, uh, the, from uh, to give us the German perspective. Thank you very, uh, very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for the invitation and the opportunity to introduce the activities of the German government in the field of autonomous driving. Um, we are convinced that the digitization of transport system has enormous potentials for our society. And this uh, applies especially for autonomous and connected uh, driving. I think we uh, regularly tend to also see very much the risks of new technologies. In this field, we are very much convinced that the uh, chances um, very much prevail the risk and therefore we are very uh, supportive as a federal government. Um, there are several reasons why we think this uh, technology is so important. Uh, Anne-Marie Idrak uh, already mentioned some of them. Mature autonomous systems, of course, will improve road safety because we can reduce uh, human errors. It uh, offers the opportunity to improve the quality of life because um, let's, uh, in the end, uh, it allows the consumer to spend the time uh, in car for meaningful activities. You do not have to um, watch the, the traffic all the time. 
And uh, of course, it also contributes to less congestion and therefore less uh, emissions. I also want to um, address the social dimension. Autonomous driving helps to sustain the mobility of the elderly people as it allows for a door to door uh, transport. And these solutions also are very important for rural areas because we see that the public transport doesn't work properly there in the urban uh, in the in the rural areas and therefore this uh, for us seems to be a very smart solution to to improve the the mobility situation um, uh, just to uh, to put it in that words we also just amended the transport uh, the the passenger transport act to allow for pooling and so on and we think that uh, uh, as soon as we have um, autonomous vehicles really in, in public transport this will even uh, will be a boost for for autonomous driving so, as I said, the German government is very supportive uh, of autonomous and connected driving. Um, first field of action is, um, of course, research, uh, research and development. Only the, the Ministry of Transport and Digital Infrastructure uh, invested more than 200 million euros in the last years. And um, similar sums have been invested by the Ministry of Research and also the Ministry of Economics. So this is really, uh, we really spent uh, lots of money in this technology. And we also um, establish digital test beds on public roads where these projects can be, um, can be conducted under real life conditions. And uh, the first and, and our most important national test bed was the one on the A9 between Munich and Nuremberg. But I also want to mention here on the European stage, uh, our trilateral test bed that we have initiated together with France and Luxembourg. Uh, and I think this is very important to see the uh, the international and especially in Europe, the, the European perspective. And uh, I think this is a good, uh, well, good moment to, uh, to um, see that, uh, to see that project. We also uh, already had an, an ethics commissions, uh, which uh, ethics uh, commission, which uh, uh, gave us a, a recommendation how to deal with the, uh, well, uh, ethic, uh, ethic, ethical problems uh, of autonomous driving um, Jean-Marie already mentioned the problem of social acceptance. We cannot uh, underestimate uh, that, uh, but I think we already had uh, some, some good uh, results of this um, commission. But of course, in the end, um, the regulatory framework uh, is, is very important. And as I said, we want to, um, to establish a very modern um, uh, framework, which is open to innovation in this field. Our first step was in 2017, uh, when we um, made a law which allowed for highly automated driving, so the use of the so-called level three cars. And now we want, uh, similarly to, uh, to France, um, create a regulatory framework for autonomous driving without any driver or uh, also security driver. Um, and on public roads, so not for testing purposes, but really for a regular use in, in, uh, on public roads. Today, the autonomous cars um, are not able to drive on every road in the transport system. So therefore, our draft law allows for the use on dedicated roads, which have been approved by authorities. And um, the law will cover a wide range of scenarios. Um, mainly, of course, we think of people movers. So the shuttle systems, which um, will be used for public transport on uh, dedicated roads in municipalities. But um, the draft law also gives room for further uh, scenarios like uh, transport of goods on the last mile. I think at the moment uh, during the pandemic, we see uh, that uh, Amazon and so on um, are very uh, frequently, frequently used uh, by, by people. So the last mile topic will be very important uh, as well, I think. Um, our draft law has now been adopted by the cabinet in February. And um, it will now be discussed in Parliament in May. And in parallel, we are in a very constructive dialogue with the European Commission. Thank you for that, uh, at, uh, uh, at this opportunity. And our impression is that we get a very positive uh, feedback from the Parliament, as far as we uh, perceive it right now, and also from our lender. Uh, they already gave their, uh, their statements uh, with regard to our draft law. And they had many questions, but in the end, the overall feedback was very positive. 
And also uh, our chancellor herself is very uh, interested in this uh, uh, legislative project. So uh, we are very interested how the debate is going on in the next weeks and months. Of course, now it is also important that uh, the companies develop the technology as well as the use cases. And against this background, I'm very happy that uh, we see these activities of Navia and ZF Friedrichshafen to bring autonomous cars on the roads. But still, this law only provides an interim solution where cars are manufactured or uh, being used cross-border. Um, we, of course, need an international, we need international and European provisions. And um, certainly we have a high interest, a high interest in, in creating such harmonized rules. And uh, therefore we very much welcome uh, the activities of the European Commission in this field. And in my perception, the commission is uh, really working on this topic uh, now with a very high intensity and, uh, um, and also priority. So we very much welcome that. And we are very much willing to, um, to bring in uh, uh, the first experiences with the German national law to contribute to good European solutions. And um, I can assure that Germany will support the commission uh, as good as we can to develop common uh, European provisions. So we are ready to go now, but uh, we think that in an international comparison with uh, all the regulatory activities in, in Germany, in France, but also in Europe, uh, of the Commission, uh, in comparison with uh, Asia and America, I think we are in a, in a leading position uh, when it comes to the regulatory side. So not only in Germany, also in France and also in Europe, and we have the chance now to um, to uh, get on quickly. So thanks a lot for your attention and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Right, thanks very much, Dr. Mitana. Okay, well, that's a perfect segue into our commission speaker. I got it slightly wrong before. It's actually jo Joanna Sikowska uh, from DG Grow will be uh, giving a short speech and then Mr. Lagrange will be taking part in the panel discussion. Joanna, I'm told that you're already online, although I, I can't see you on, you're there. Hello yes, there, welcome. Yes. Hi, over to you. Thank you. Good morning and uh, very sorry for, for confusion because indeed uh, we had to adjust our participation very last moment. So uh, my apologies for not being clear uh, about um, the role that we take in today's conference. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, it's a privilege and honor to uh, discuss uh, the topic of automated public transport uh, with distinguished guests and I feel already compelled to address a few comments that were made by previous speakers in their introductory um, uh, speeches and that they are very relevant and very important for the discussion so I'll come back to a few points that you made. Uh, I think it's fair to say that automated um, public transport and certain applications they do have a very transformative uh, potential for mobility as such. They are important for green and for automated agenda of the, of the Commission, of the EU. And I think uh, there's one more aspect that we sometimes uh, do not talk about, which is transformation of the value chains. So competitiveness angle. And that's something very, very relevant and what would need to be um, discussed. Uh, you have all known very well that uh, automat automotive sector has been undergoing uh, twin transformation or maybe actually never even more than twin for quite some time. And we are talking about Green Deal, which sometimes overshadows automation. But if you look at potential growth potential along four axes of the transformation, so automation, connectivity, mobility services, and clean technologies, actually the greatest uh, potential for growth resides with automation. Today we are talking about the global market of 46 billion, which is likely to grow in the next um, seven, 10 years to 470 billion. So there's, there's a lot to tap into. And uh, we already see automation uh, becoming part of life with certain applications of level one and two. We expect that uh, by next year we'll have some limited applications of level three and four on the highway. And by uh, 2030, that levels three and four automation will become commonplace. So this is uh, the time horizon, or even though we have to be 
careful about saying what will happen when, because we have heard many announcements before that didn't even materialize at a given moment. But nevertheless, I think the trend is uh, pretty clear. We have um, a strong automotive industry. We have uh, our our. Uh, automakers are world leaders when it comes to automation level one and two, and they are also at the forefront of uh, more advanced levels of automation. And what is equally important, particularly for the topic of today's discussion, it's a um, very flourishing market of startups active in uh, applications such as shuttles. So we have ZF, we have Navia, we have Next, we have EasyMile. And um, that's, uh, that is a big promise that indeed uh, EU will play an important role on, on, on this growing um, automated uh, transport market. Now, um, it is uh, still a topic that faces many challenges, technical, regulatory and financial. And that's why we as the Commission are trying to have this holistic look at what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. Uh, we have uh, presented already three years ago a strategy for connected automated driving. Three years uh, sounds like a very, very distant uh, era now because changes are so quick that it's maybe not appropriate to talk about what we did in 2018. But we believe that the principles are still valid. And we have reiterated them with our smart and sustainable mobility strategy, which indeed indicates 2030 as the year where automated driving will be a, a common place. And maybe let me refer to the point made by uh, Madame Irak. I think you're right. We need a vision and we need a coherent vision. So the way we, 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 we design our policy documents, we try to make sure that indeed we are taking all the threats together. Uh, we have one more additional guarantee that things will go in one direction and consistently because we have a commissioner, uh, one commissioner who is responsible for, for internal market, for connectivity and for automation. So I think we have all a tool in our hands and certainly this is what we are going to pursue. So um, we, we, it is not about strategy, it's not about writing um, policy documents, about doing things. So what we have been doing, I think you mentioned yourself, that there's been a lot of money that has been allocated to automation under Horizon 2020. Even more will be allocated in the context of Horizon Europe. We have put in place a SICAM platform that looked at the interplay between research and testing. And um, finally, we are now at the stage of making sure that research applications and testing will find its way to real life. What is a prerequisite for this happening in a correct way, or at least one of the prerequisites, is the sound legal framework. You said it both. You've been working on uh, Germany and France, been working on the rules for deployment of automated vehicles, and we certainly are very pleased to see such developments. But you will not be surprised if I say that if we want to be successful, we need to have one common coherent framework. It's very difficult to operate in the within 27 different regimes. Well, maybe not 27, maybe there wouldn't be as many, but the point is that we need to have one common basis that would ensure that the single market is functional. And uh, we have to have it now. So um, we have started working on a specific uh, legislation for automated shuttles. And my colleagues, Antonio, will, will tell you more about it. And uh, not only this, we, we have a very strong legal basis for working on automated features, which is general safety regulation that already regulates features Ooh. such as uh, automated braking, uh, speed adaptation, uh, lane keeping. We have looked into cybersecurity rules. We, have, we are looking now at event and the rec data recorders. So we have a whole plethora of uh, regulatory solutions for putting in place automated driving. And um, we are now specifically developing the rules for automated shuttles. So we believe we are very much on track and we would like these rules to be applicable as of July next year. So um, I will make Maybe uh, finish with um, echoing what uh, what has also been said before. Uh, 
it is all very good and indispensable to have the components that I mentioned. So research, testing, deployment, regulatory framework. But of course, it will take us nowhere if we will not have a public buy-in. So we are very, very aware that we have to have people who will want to use these applications, who will want to, um, who will support automation. And we actually think that with um, automated shuttles, with robotaxis, there is a big chance for us to make sure that automation will gradually be a concept that will be accepted publicly. We believe that if we can offer a product which is safe, which is convenient and accessible to broad public, that will greatly facilitate um, public acceptance. So uh, we also consider this while uh, developing the, the framework and putting in place the, 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 uh, the supportive uh, measures in order for, for automation to, uh, to be a, a, a common place. Um, I, I will maybe uh, finish by saying that we do recognize that this is not the work that can be carried out uh, exclusively by the commission or exclusively by the member state or only by the industry. I think vision, we have to have a common vision, but we have to have a common implementation strategy. We all have to do it together because the task is simply too big. So uh, we are extremely happy to have the discussion with you today to see how you see our role us to tell you what we could gain from your experience. And uh, well, we are at your disposal for any further conversation on the topic. Thank you very much. Great, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Koska. Great, now I see um, we're gonna go over to the panel discussion and I see that Mr. Ertug, are you already on the call? Yes, I'm, I'm already here. Oh, great, hello. Welcome, thanks very much. I'm just gonna quickly introduce you and then I'm going to ask you to give us your view uh, on behalf of the parliament, but maybe also your individual view on the potential of automated uh, uh, public transport. If I just quickly introduce you, you're a German S&D MEP, member of the transport committee and rapporteur on mobility. Um, so eminently qualified uh, for today's discussion. So if I didn't get anything wrong, Mr. Ertug, I'd like to invite you to give us, uh, you know, your thoughts on um, uh, the potential of automatic public transport and the initiatives um, that we've been hearing about um, from our speakers so far. Yes, thank you very much and good morning to all of you, first of all. Um, it's interesting to, to listen to experts when it comes to uh, public transport. I just want to mention that I was the, the MEP in the parliament who um, founded and moderated the Driving Future platform in the previous term. Um, that was a time where the average politician didn't, uh, was not able to write uh, automated driving, but we already did that at that time and tried to put or tried to to um, uh, connect the uh, political area with the industrial area. It does mean the European Commission plus the parliament plus the industry. And uh, I have learned so many things within the nine series what we did at that time. Um, connected, connected automated driving, I think it's, it will be the future. We won't uh, stop that anymore. Um, when we look to the, to the um, difficulties in our mobility, we see we have a periphery and we have um, uh, dense populated conurbation urban areas. And the most um, pressure is on the urban area. That does mean the people, um, and I think I'm a good example for that. I represent Bavaria and Bavaria is um, not only Munich and Nuremberg and Augsburg and so on. We also have uh, rural areas where you can see uh, the difficulties. Um, and with this automated driving and the connected driving, I'm sure we could overcome a little bit the gap. The pressure on the, on the big cities uh, could be a little bit stretched and uh, we could also support um, the rural area by this technology. Um, when it comes to public transport, and I'm always saying that the public transport in any case, and I think this won't change in 100 years, 
will be the backbone of the transport and of mobility, in particular in the big cities. And um, uh, what, what, I, what, I, what, I can, what I can tell is um, the, European, the European Union and the European Commission tried several times to, um, uh, to take up this topic with different legislations. Um, and I, wouldn't, I don't want to criticize the European Commission, and I'm well known that I'm not always a big fan of the European Commission's policy, don't understand me wrong. I like them, but sometimes they, they are too much politician rather than executive. Therefore, uh, in that topic, I'm sure that the European Commission did a very good job. And now in the next years, we have that also in front of us, we have that in front of us and we have to um, uh, find ways, in particular after this corona crisis, in particular on the financial side. Uh, we see that uh, the public transport companies, uh, they are under pressure um, and the financial pressure cannot be um, uh, taken away without support by the political, uh, by, the, by the legislators. Uh, this is, in a nutshell, that what I want to say, but I'm more interested in a discussion later on. And thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be with you together. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think I'd like to go next um, uh, to give the um, to Mr. Mohamed Mezgani, who's Secretary General of uh, UITP, the International uh, Public Transport Union. Uh, to, how do you and your organisation see the potential of automated public transport, uh, Mr. Mezgani? Thank you, thank you, Simon, and thank you, Navia, for the for the invitation. I'm very happy to be uh, in this uh, in this session. Uh, I think one uh, one lesson we have learned from this pandemic is uh, and uh, and what we realised, especially during the lockdown periods, is the space used by cars, or I would say the space wasted uh, by by for cars. And, uh, and I think this is a key, a key aspect in, uh, in mobility and in urban transport. In addition, of course, to having a clean and green mobility, in addition, of course, to the very important issue of safety, safety not just of the people in the car or in the vehicle, but also safety of those people, pedestrians and cyclists, uh, and also the accessibility and the, the uh, social inclusive, inclusiveness of the, of the mobility. And uh, when we look to this issue of, uh, of space, we realize that we need to, 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 to use this space differently, that we need to use the space to move people and not to move cars. And then if we, if we, from this perspective, it's important that the autonomous uh, vehicles are integrated with public transport, with mass public transport. And I, I'm happy to see the French approach of public and shared because this is exactly what we, what uh, our vision in, in UITP, that, uh, uh, that uh, it's not about just removing the driver from the, from the cars, because if we do that, then, you know, it will grow traffic. It will create uses of uh, cars, even without no one on board. And, and so it will create a new traffic. And this is what we want to avoid. And that's why it's important that these uh, 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 autonomous vehicles are shared and on demand and complementing mass public transport. It's a way to have mobility, not just, or public transport, not just from station to station, but from door to door. And we have the opportunity with autonomous vehicles and with the, the autonomous driving to have this door to door mobility system. And we can come back later if you want on the benefits or that this could, could bring. But this is really uh, our vision uh, of, uh, ex expanding the scope of public transport beyond mass transit by integrating autonomous shuttles, autonomous vehicles, shared vehicles and on-demand vehicles in the public transport uh, scope. Great. Thanks, Mr. Mizgani. Um if I can go next to you, Mr. Goleski, uh, Torsten Goleski, um, from Head of Automated uh, Autonomous Mobility at ZF, to give us the sort of industry and the tech provider perspective. Um, we've been focusing on driverless shuttles, um, but how do you see the market for uh, um, automated driving uh, developing? And what are the business opportunities for a company like yourself or for other European companies on a global scale? Yeah, thank you very much, Simon, for the question. So good morning, everybody from my side. First of all, let me thank you to 
um, Mrs. Yidrak and Mr. Mitana for the um, initiative to regulate um, autonomous shuttle legislation. And also thank you to um, Mrs. Sikowska and uh, Mr. Atuk for the words, which are very promising words. And um, also with the latest statement from Mr. Miskani, I think it's, in, it's very important to understand what's going on now. We have all together uh, the, the possibility to shape an, a future urban mobility of the future in a totally different way. And, um, and exactly what uh, Mr. Miskani said, it's not about moving cars, it's about moving people. And, and the, ex the expectation of moving people is that it's convenient, it's safe, it's, it's um, uh, driven by clean energy, and we want to save time. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't really fit to the expectation of the younger generation that they stand still in the congestion with an automated car. They want to save time, they just want to have mobility. And we have the possibility now with autonomous um, um, shuttles to transform. And that was, I think um, um, Mrs. Sikowska mentioned that we can transform our industry and we can transform our mobility in urban areas of the future with autonomous shuttles. And it's also transforming a value chain. And um, so from the technical perspective and from the business perspective, so far we have and the colleagues from Navia uh, did it as well, made huge progress over the last years. We um, matured the technology, we matured the sensors, um, and we all took an approach also, which um, makes a, a technical maturity by leveraging what we have all learned from the automotive industry over the past years in developing the ADA systems. And that's the reason why we are using, for example, in shuttles, automotive graded components and set a standard which is well known today. On the other hand, um, we have, for example, if you if you look what the CF is uh, operating or is operating with to get there in, in Rotterdam in the already in the third generation, since more than 10 years, we are operating automated shuttles without a safety driver to connect um, 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 a living area and an industrial area to the mass public transportation system. And thank you, Mr. Miskani, for your approach. Yeah? We need to connect automated uh, shuttles with the mass transportation system. And that is what urban mobility of the future should look, look like. Yeah? And, and then we can open up, at, in my point of view, a huge a new way of um, automated transportation by shuttles. And that drives also our industry, that drives a new potential of, of, of revenues that also will come up with an increase of new uh, possibilities to create um, jobs also for a lot of people. Because just think about these automated vehicles need to be maintained yeah, in order to work 24 seven. Yeah? And so I, I really want to promote that we have all together here a, a huge opportunity to shape urban mobility of the future for the industry, for our citizens in Europe, yeah? and, um, and to come up with a new transport system, which also will set a standard all over the world. Great, thanks, Mr. Goleski. Um, Madam Idrak, if I could come back to you. So we've heard from uh, Ms. Sukoska in the commission. From what she was saying, is the commission going in the right lines for you? And she they have a very broad vision as well, not just about the, regular, the, the, the type approval issue, but a, yes. a very broad framework for the future of automated driving. Are you, are you, do you welcome what, what Ms. Sukoska uh, yes, was yes. talking about? Yes, it was uh, really very, very uh, interesting, and uh, it, I must say interesting by itself uh, as a commission uh, commitment, and interesting as uh, so well aligned uh, with uh, what we are doing uh, with uh, Germany and, uh, and other countries. So really very interesting, and as you said, um, the, the wide range, because we all have, of course, in, in mind uh, the um, investment in uh, R&I and uh, innovation. Uh, um, uh, as uh, Tobias mentioned for Germany, we have also, uh, of course, an uh, in, in, in important program uh, uh, dedicated to uh, automated vehicles under the umbrella of all our innovation and development programs for cars, because cars, we say that will be uh, green, uh, connected and shared. 
These are the three words. And these are the words we use for our investment in our technology programs. Then we have all the regulation and of course the industrial aspect. So really very, uh, very interesting. And uh, thank you thank you very much to the, to, to the commission and also uh, to uh, what uh, the, Mr. Ertug said for the, uh, for the, for the parliament. It is a, uh, well, Good beginning of the day when you see uh, all uh, these uh, different people sharing uh, globally the same type of, um, of, uh, of vision. Thank you, uh, Madam Idrak. Uh, Mr. Mitana, um, a lot of the speakers have emphasized the word shared, but maybe maybe it's me and my poor hearing, but I, did you emphasize the word shared? Is, is shared transport at also at the center of your vision? Yes, of course. Um, I think um, I, I mentioned the uh, so shared mobility, of course, is uh, for us a, a very important uh, aspect. Uh, I mentioned our uh, trans um, Passenger Transport Act, uh, for example, and uh, the pooling systems that we want to okay. take forward yeah. so far. And um, so uh, I think this is the, uh, the the future of transport and um, when we talk about automated public uh, autonomous public transport this is basically uh, the same because what we are uh, regulating with uh, passenger transport in the, uh, today is autonomous transport in, um, in the future and I think one of the uh, the questions that I read uh, was about well will it actually um, reduce um, the cars that we have on the streets uh, when we bring forward that technology and when we make sure that the regulatory uh, basis is, uh, is made, I think this will be the case because um, if you uh, have the opportunity to get from door to door with cars which are not your own, uh, it will be less interesting to, uh, to have your own car and uh, you, will be, you will make use of uh, these um, uh, public transport systems. Uh, and, and autonomous uh, vehicles. And therefore, I think it will be a good contribution to have less cars uh, on the street. Um, you will have cars which are driving 80% uh, of the time and not 5% uh, of the time a day. And therefore, I think it uh, will be a contribution so far. If I, say, if I may say a word on that point, uh, what Tobias said at the moment is very interesting, is the fact that uh, it's not autonomous vehicles by themselves, per se, which can produce this type of uh, uh, positive effect. It is the way they are used, uh, the type of uh, policy they are uh, integrated uh, in. That's why uh, we think uh, with other countries uh, that it is very important to have uh, local authorities implied in, in not only in the use cases, uh, but uh, in the use of these uh, vehicles and uh, and, uh, and new uh, services, and that is why uh, it will be um, a part of national and local regulations. Because of course, each country has uh, its own specificities, its own uh, local organization, and uh, and so on. Uh, so, um, as uh, the lady from the commission said, uh, we have technology, we and we also have all these aspect uh, in order to have a real effect, uh, which are not only technical, only regulation, only social, uh, but a, a compilation of all that. Okay. Just a, a may, question. Simon, Sorry? Simon, just once, and I think just to react on what, what Mr. Mitanen has said, I think uh, the reduction of cars should not just be a consequence. It should be an objective that we, we, we clearly have uh, because if we, we keep uh, increasing the number of cars, we, I mean, our cities will collapse. So it should be really the objective and the target that we, we, have, that we have targets to reduce the number of cars. I think it's, it's essential. Okay, great. Um, just, we, we have some questions um, uh, asked by members of the audience. Um, quite a provocative one about um, why the French and German uh, legislation maybe wasn't better coordinated. But I suspect the answer, to, I mean, well, I don't know, uh, Mr. Mitan and Mr. Dirac, if you want to address that, but I, presumably that's why you're also pushing for EU level uh, regulation um, to avoid the patchwork and fragmentation. But do you want to just answer that comment that the, the French and German approaches weren't coordinated? That's come in from uh, Mr. Tobias Reich. 
Yes, of course. I don't know, uh, Marie. Uh, please go. Like please go. First? Okay. So, uh, I think it's. Uh, we had a. Uh, we are in a in a uh, in a good contact, as you see, uh, France and, and Germany, and uh, so uh, it's not that we have uh, well uh, made up uh, completely different uh, law, but I think it's quite it's quite similar. But in the end, um, we have uh, different players in our um, legislative procedures. We have different uh, stakeholders. We have to uh, to integrate in the discussion. So I think it's uh, of course it's uh, in the nature of the, the uh, procedure that we will not have exactly identical uh, identical uh, provisions, and that's the reason why we uh, think it's it's very good that the Commission is uh, pushing the topic now and and tries to get harmonized uh, solutions. The question is um, always: Can we make a first step, which necessarily means that we have not uh, a bad very broad, uh, completely harmonized solution, or uh, are we waiting until we have this very broad consensus, which we will have uh, to, which we will need for uh, European solutions? And I think it was good to uh, to uh, to do the first step now to make a proposal and to to get on quickly in Europe. And uh, as I said in my statement at the beginning, this is a, uh, an interim solution. What uh, we are doing what France is doing, and we think it will be good if, on the basis of our experiences, then uh, the Commission can um, have um, can make up a harmonized uh, regulation. I think that's good. Commission is underway, and we are um, uh, trying to give input uh, of uh, our experiences. Okay, Madame Idrak, do you want to come in, or has uh, he said everything? Well, just uh, well, um, I could say the same. Uh, just a reminder about the role uh, of uh, UN UC uh, regulations for vehicle uh, types, and also the fact that uh, we we must have uh, a common basis, as it was said before, and then. Uh, for countries uh, which are interested uh, and which are uh, ready, the possibility to, to move on. And I can give two examples of uh, why it is, uh, well, just a fact to have a national um, regulation uh, on the basis of a common uh, uh, approach. The first is about uh, accountability and about insurance issues. In each country, we haven't the same type of concept. Uh, for uh, insurance. And of course, mm. responsibility uh, is very, very important for the development, uh, including the uh, acceptability, acceptance of uh, this type of, well, it yeah. is different in each country. Uh, and the second uh, example uh, is about uh, local organization. It is not the same in each country. And uh, the land regulation, the uh, user uh, um, uh, capacities uh, should be partly uh, designed and decided by local authorities. That's why it is a little complicated, but such is life. It is really necessary to have this uh, international framework, European dynamic uh, basis, and local or uh, national uh, part of regulation. Okay, thanks, uh, Madame Idrak. Uh, I'd like to come back to Mr. Ertug. Um, uh, you've had a chance to listen to some of the views. Are you are you also happy with the direction that um, the policy development is going? Um, and is are the emphases in the policy right? I mean, is, is there sufficient focus on mass public transport, uh, but also technological development and uh, the, the, the the business aspects, the future employment development? What do you what do you think? Is it a balanced approach? So it, it sounds not bad. It sounds not bad, but uh, the detail lays in the evil as always. And um, we have we have to take care uh, from the European level in particular. It, let me say it like this: uh, we have to uh, we, we 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 have to take care on the future um, uh, targets. We have um, other challenges in front of us as we had ten or fifteen years ago. Therefore. Uh, it sounds not bad, and I'm always very happy that all the experts are uh, around us. But um, I would say mainly yes. But as I said, um, the, 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 the evil lies in the detail, and uh, we have to take care of the position of the European Commission. We need studies, we need impact assessments, and we had and we have to um, include all the 
uh, different institutes who already made uh, dozens of studies, in particular in big, um, uh, big cities. I, I, I would say yes, but uh, that does not mean that I'm uh, absolutely 100% um, happy with, with that what has been said. Okay. Great, thanks a lot. Um, we um, just I want to ask an, a, another question about sort of the global situation, um, uh, and whoever wants to come in on this is welcome to do so. Where is um, the European sector and European businesses in relation to their global competitors uh, and other uh, jurisdictions such as such as the US? Are we lagging behind? Uh, or are there some areas of leadership um, who could who would like to talk about that? I'm thinking it might be one for you, Torsten. Yes, yes. Uh, let me step in here. So um, I think we have a good uh, position currently in Europe. We have already seen um, a lot of initiatives. Uh, we have seen uh, test drives, but we have already, um, as I already mentioned, uh, operational shuttles in in public transportation since more than ten years. However. Um, and it just came out of, uh, of uh, the impression of um, the Auto Shanghai, which is currently in China. All the other regions in the world are also moving fast. Uh, and, uh, and just see what happens also in the United States uh, with a lot of uh, funding. And uh, But um, I see a huge opportunity. Um, so we have a lot of experience. We have a strong um, technology in Europe spread over, over the whole uh, region uh, with companies with a long, long lasting experience in automotive. So we are not working on a startup technology. We are working on solid technology developing the automotive industry. And I think that is important. And we need to join forces. We need to help the cities to, to deploy autonomous shuttles, uh, to, to, to um, come up with urban mobility systems. And it must be a joint approach between the industry, between the cities, and, and the legislation um, thing. And uh, one, one thing which is really important to me is, I think the, the necessity to have a legal framework in the, in the European Union also helps us to set a minimum of standards for safety of these autonomous shuttles. Um, I, I do not want to have um, uh, startup technology um, rolling out with uh, laboratory ECUs yeah? Yeah. Uh, and transporting people. And if something happens, then um, we get also a better reputation on the overall approach, which is a huge and important approach for the future of mobility in urban cities. And so it, it would be good to, to leverage the strengths of the European industry and the technology we have to set these standards and, the, and make an ability to roll out this public transportation concept um, here in, in Europe. And, and, and we, we, are, we can be really at the forefront, but we should use the, the, this, still this advantage, but all the others are catching up. Great, thanks. Um, we had an interesting question come in via the Q&A function from uh, Mr. Remy de Keister saying, uh, if I can paraphrase, when do you think we're going to see widespread uh, automated vehicles in, let's say, European cities? Um, Joanna uh, Sikoska talked about 2030 as the year of automated driving. Uh, to all of our panelists, when, how, do you, how long do you think it will take for automated vehicles, driverless vehicles, to be a common sight on our streets? And that's open to anyone who'd like Please. to... The cases are counting to use uh, cases in well, very next years uh, for uh, vehicles on uh, dedicated uh, lanes and for uh, shared and uh, well public uh, transportation or complements to uh, public uh, transportation. This will be in coming years. Uh, we'll go from the steps are uh, now we are experimenting. Then we we'll go to uh, pilot. And a few years after, uh, we'll go to uh, scaling and uh, and, uh, and development. Uh, for uh, logistics, I think that uh, it is um, coming uh, quite rapidly, especially in ports and also for the last uh, mile uh, delivery. For individual cars, I think that we are going to uh, automatization uh, more than autonomization. <laughs> uh, so it will be more and more easy uh, to drive, uh, but it won't be really autonomous before decades. And even in the States, they say that now, that maybe level five 
will be in dreams. Yeah, good. Anyone else like to come in on this? I, I'd quite. Um, uh, I'd like to invite actually Mr. Lagrange from the Commission, you haven't spoken in the, in the panel discussion, uh, to come in either on this or any of the things that we've discussed so far. Mr. Lagrange, are you still there? Can't see you, but... Hi there. Would you like to come in on some of these issues? Yes, yes. Uh, so thank, thank you for, for giving me the floor. Um, Anthony Lagrange from, um, from DigiGlo. Um, leader on automated connected driving. I think, no, I think I, I take the, the discussion relatively positively. Um, I see that uh, that people are quite aligned. Uh, and I mean, even what I heard about the French uh, German initiative, I think it's still very much under the making. So it should be clear to people. So it's still under the making. So I think we are pretty much aligned in terms of calendar and in terms of objective and, and I mean, uh, the Commission cannot harmonize everything at uh, European level, and for sure, some issues uh, need to be uh, to be dealt locally. But I just wanted to stress on the shuttle use case because, uh, in my view, uh, and and that's why we we launched some initiative on this on this use case, is that I, I see uh, it very much as. Um, European uh, European um, product. So we have a lot of um, companies in this field, and um, we we uh, we are seeing now the the crossroad of moving from testing to um, uh, to commercial uh, applications. So it's really the time uh, for Europe and uh, to push on this on this use case. Uh, I think it was mentioned by the colleagues from industry. All others are not standing behind, but, but this product really, really started in Europe, and we have to make sure that uh, that we take the lead on on this market. And, uh, so for sure, we will continue to push on that. And for sure, I think it was mentioned by by France and Germany. Uh, we need to ensure that public policies uh, ensures that these products um, delivers what we expect from them in terms of uh, improving the life of, of citizens. So um, once again, I see pretty much alignment uh, amongst the different participants uh, and I think we should uh, definitely push this use case further uh, at European level uh, about shuttles. Thanks. And, and just to follow up on that, um, Mr. Lagrange, so um, several of the speakers have talked about public acceptance. I mean, I presume driverless shuttles, um, uh, one of the key tests or one of the key uh, challenges will be to build public acceptance for the next generation of uh, uh, automated uh, 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 transport. Is that how you see it? I mean, if, if people get used to seeing driverless shuttles on their streets, they will feel reassured that they're safe. So it's it's very important uh, element, uh, a building block for public acceptance. Is that how you see it? No, for sure. I mean, this one is really a, a kind of um, chicken and egg dilemma because um, for me, public... Um, how we build public acceptance is uh, by using these vehicles on a daily basis, so getting used to these vehicles. And, and for that, we need to have more, more vehicles on the road. So once again, moving from testing to this, um, uh, to this more commercial application. And, and, and at the same time, I guess industry also needs to, to have more vehicles on the road so, so that they can make progress on the technology and, and build on public acceptance. So uh, really, I think that the, ma the main message from this morning I get is that, uh, yes, let's move from experimentation co for commercial services and let's accompany that um, to ensure that uh, uh, citizens get what they, what they expect. Thank you. Um just on public acceptance, uh, Mr. Mezgani, um, do you do you see that as a do you see that as a problem and as a major challenge uh, from the system operators' point of view? You know, uh, uh, I mean, the the public acceptance of automation in public transport is not really an issue because public transport has a long experience in operating uh, autonomous uh, vehicles, autonomous metros. I mean, since the eighties, and so it's a, it's a logic continuation of what it is. Uh, already uh, taking place in public transport. And especially as it was mentioned earlier, I mean, in, in, uh, in dedicated lanes, and, and this is where autonomous vehicles will be first, uh, uh, let's say, publicly uh, implemented. It will be in dedicated lanes. And, 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 and there is a logic that it starts with public transport. So I don't, I don't think uh, 
th there will be a, there will be an issue. Of course, uh, certainly uh, we will start operating those vehicles with someone on board. We, it, 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 there will be someone on board in in case of emergency, and then progressively they will become fully full autonomous with and unmanned unmanned uh, 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 vehicles. So I, I I don't see an issue. Uh, it's a question of time. It's a question of uh, of uh, uh, showing this. Uh, experiences in, uh, in, in, in real life uh, at large scale. And we have already since the 2015, 2016, a number of uh, experimentations uh, in Lyon, in Rennes, in Switzerland, in Paris La Défense, etc. So number of ex experimentations that, uh, uh, that offer the possibility to people to discover the uh, uh, autonomous buses or autonomous shuttles. Yeah, okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Mezgani. Uh, we have, I, I'm just going to take, we're in the final five minutes before we go to concluding remarks. Uh, I'm just going to try and tackle a few more questions. Um, one is specifically to you, Mr. Ertug. Um, we have one speak, one uh, person uh, following saying that your, uh, um, your Driving Future platform was very useful. Uh, do, are you planning to uh, relaunch it, restart it? And then uh, just for our French and German representatives, um, there are questions about the cross-border uh, aspects of some of your initiatives um, uh, being limited. Um, and presumably the answer there is, of course, the EU level harmonized approach that you've been talking about. But Mr. Ertug, on your driving, safe, uh, safe, um, driving future initiative, any plans to relaunch it? Yes, uh, yeah, so far good news. It's already finalized. We have the uh, new concept um, in, on our desk, but the problem is the pandemic. Yeah? We've been already ready for, for one year now, but after the pandemic, we will come up with a new model, with a new concept, and I'm sure the, the, all the stakeholders will be, will be um, surprised what we, have, what we will present them. Yes, Great. in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Madam Idrak or Mr. Mitana, do you just want to talk about the challenges for cross-border projects that you've been involved in? Please, Tobias. Well, um, I just could say it's, um, of course, it's our aim to, uh, to get uh, this uh, cross-border uh, testing uh, on as, uh, as quick as possible. But um, as I said, we, um, we set up the, the trilateral testbed I think um, Mrs. Rusler said that there has to be, uh, well, still be uh, done some uh, improvement uh, to get it, um, uh, well, to, to get things run. But um, we are uh, doing our best to, to get on and to also give some uh, input for the European uh, legislation and so far. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, we've um, kept well to time. Uh, and I think I've dealt with all the questions that we had identified and many that had come in from our audience online. And thanks to the audience for being so involved and being so interested. Um, I think uh, I will now hand over to Olivier Le Cornec from Navia um, to um, make some concluding remarks. Olivier. Thank you very much and thank you all for this exchange. As we can see, heavy shuttles uh, are level four for public transport are here today. A lot of work is done on the legal part, harmonization is needed, and an action plan to support EU industry is to be set at this case, if you want to save the world leader. We can also see that technology is advancing quickly as they have highlighted, especially with short-term applications. At Navia, for example, today we are switching flight implementation to deployment in several cities. In Saint-Quentin on Yveline, um, a city with more than 150 employees coming per day, one of the biggest PTA in France, IDFM, inaugurates a new bus line with only EV shuttle driving around. This is to complement the current public transport system and elevate employees for the mass public transport to their work. It's exactly what explained Mr. Mezgani at the beginning. It's a question of moving people and providing the good service for the use case of service and the good uh, for the citizens. Exactly the same as Mr. Mitana explained, we have to reduce the space taken by a new car in the city. We are not waiting for robot taxis. We are not, which 
may, may arrive in 10 or 20 years, I don't know exactly. We are here to provide the best services for the CTN in the early next years. All EU actors on the AV shuttle are facing these state challenges on rising the maturity of the technology. At the same time, many cities are witnessing a shift toward public shared and collaborative mobility on need to scale up to an automatic public transport. Both need to be supported from legal and financial point of view, which will therefore support and remain at the forefront of the transition toward greater sustainability and modern mobility system. We now foresee a need to accelerate this work around a common EU legal framework for automotive and public transport. Size the window of opportunity that with recovery and resilient fund presence and use other EU financial instruments to support our EU industry. And raise our AV ecosystem to reinforce open sovereignty and strategic independence to face international competition. And we are talking just before at the US and Asia competitors. I hope we can discuss further on how to make it happen. I would like again to thank Torsten and the DEF team for this event, which was a beautiful de demonstration of the EU collaborations. I want also to thank all the panelists, Madame Idrak, Mrs. Sikowska, Dr. Amit Honor, Mr. Ertug, and Mr. Mesgani. We were more than 200 attendees at this meeting. Thank you all for attending this event, this, this event sorry, which was a big success. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Olivier. Okay, well, you've done everything I need to do. Uh, thanking, but so uh, let me thank you, Olivier, and also thank uh, all the speakers we've had today on this very high level panel for a very interesting discussion about a very exciting technology that I think we all hope to see far more of uh, on our urban areas and, as our German speakers have stressed, maybe uh, providing uh, transport solutions in rural areas, which are often neglected uh, in this discussion, including in the country that I know best. Um, thank you all very much. And uh, uh, thank you especially to all the people who followed online. The numbers have really uh, been very impressive and it's a, a strong indication of the level of interest uh, in this exciting technology. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.